In my first video, I focused on elasticities. In that video, we focused on elasticity of demand. There are three other types of elasticities, and in this video, I'll focus on cross-price elasticity of demand. Cross-price elasticity of demand focuses on the price of relative goods. If you recall from the video on the demand curve, we focused on the four determinants of demand, income, tastes or preferences, population expansion, and the expected price. In this video, we'll focus on the fifth one, the price of relative goods, which take into account the difference between a substitute good and a complementary good. Again, as we know, the elasticity measures the sensitivity we face when the price of a product increases or when the price of the product decreases. Quick recap from the price elasticity of demand. We found out that to measure the price elasticity of demand, the formula was used percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. Now, with regards to the cross price elasticity of demand, we also have the same formula. We have percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. But the difference here is that the price elasticity of demand focused on one product, while the cross price elasticity of demand focuses on two products. And how we show this is by saying the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price of product one. So let's say the price of product one changes, we want to see the reaction or the consumption based on product two. So this now becomes the new formula that we use for cross price elasticity of demand. Before we get into the nitty gritty of what substitution complements look on the graphs and how it's calculated, we need to understand the difference between a substitute good and a complementary good. Substitute good is quite easy to understand. This is where you can substitute one good for another good very easily. So in my opinion, a strong substitute case would be butter and margarine. And a complementary good is something where you can only use the product if you combine it with the use of another product. For example, you can only pay tennis with a tennis racket and a tennis ball. Tennis racket and a tennis ball. The other types of substitute products that we could have is maybe tea and coffee or Coke and Pepsi. These basically are where you can easily substitute one good for the other good. And on the complementary side, we have printer and ink and CD and CD player where you can't use one without using the other product. And this is the concept of price of relative goods or the cross price elasticity of demand, which measures the effect of one goods price on the consumption or the quantity demanded of another good. Okay, so let's focus on the concept of substitutes. I've taken butter and margarine as our two examples, and we'll show them on our different demand curves. Let's suppose now that the price of butter will increase. And because we're dealing with substitute products, we know that it's gonna have an effect on the quantity consumed of margarine. The nice part about cross price elasticities is that we can actually show it in this form. So price of butter to quantity of butter in relation to the price of margarine to the quantity of margarine. Now, if we simply do the price of butter, if we show it like this, where price of butter links to quantity of margarine and the price of margarine links to the quantity of butter, we can say that when the price of butter increases, we want to see the effect on the quantity consumed of margarine. So as the, the line takes us to quantity of margarine, we can say that because the price of butter increases, the quantity consumed of margarine will also increase because the price of butter went up. This allows us to use the cross price elasticity to show that when the price of one product goes up, we want to see the effect on the quantity consumed of another product. Now, looking at the two different graphs. On graph one, we have the butter graph, which is listed here. We can say that when the price of butter goes up, it causes a move along the curve. So for example, the price of product A goes up from P0 to P1, and this will naturally cause us to consume less of that particular product because the price of that product went up. This movement from A to B will be a move along 
the curve. With regard to the second graph, which is the margarine graph, we know that the price of butter increased. Now, as we know from the move along and the shift of the curve, we're now going to shift the curve to the left or to the right. Because the price of butter increased or decreased, there is no price of butter on the margarine graph. This price signifies that it belongs to margarine. So, for example, if the price of butter increased, then the quantity consumed of margarine also increased because consumption becomes cheaper. We therefore shift our demand curve to the right hand side from D0 to D1, leaving the price of mar margarine unchanged and the quantity to increase in the consumption of margarine. The shift from point A to point B and D0 to D1 show that there is an increase in quantity consumed of margarine. So how we can summarize this is we can say that when the price of butter increases, the quantity consumed of margarine also increases where the two arrows are upward in an upward direction, which shows that whenever we're dealing with a substitute relationship, we always have a positive relationship between price of one product in relation to the quantity consumed of the other product. Okay, so let's shift our attention now to complements. I've chosen complement number one is printer and the second complement to be ink. Can't use one product without using the other product as a complementary product. Okay, so now let's say, for example, we have a situation where the price of printers go up. Therefore, what will happen to the consumption or the quantity demanded of ink? Again, we can put this on our diagram. So we have the price of printers to the quantity of printers in relation to the price of ink to the quantity consumed of ink. So again, let's do that. And we assume here that the price of a printer increases. And that will cause the consumption of ink to decrease because the price of printers has gone up. Somewhere along the line in the economy, someone's not going to buy that printer and the ink because there is an increase in the price of printers, leading to the consumption or quantity demand decrease in ink. So therefore, we can say here we have a negative or inverse relationship between price of printer and the quantity of ink. And we always have a negative elasticity, which I'll show you later on in the video, between a complementary good. So here we're interested in the relationship between price of printer and quantity of ink. Let's show this now on the graph where we have an increase in the price of printers. So if this is our printer graph here, we say that there's an increase in price of printer. We know that the only thing that causes a move along in the curve is when the price of a product increases or decreases. Therefore, the price of printer increases from P0 to P1, causing a consumption decrease from Q0 to Q1. And the movement from point A to point B is shown here as a move along. If we move over to the ink graph, we know that the price of printer has gone up. But here we have the price of ink on the ink graph. Therefore, it's a relative price of a good, which shows that there will be a decrease in the quantity consumed of ink. Therefore, we shift our curve from D0 to D1. We shift our curve like that, moving from D0 to D1, showing that the price of the ink doesn't need to change, but because the price of the printer increased, we know that there will be a decrease in quantity consumed of ink. Therefore, the shift from point A to point B is shown as a shift from D0 to D1. Now that you understand the graphical illustration of what a substitute and a complement is, we can move over to the calculations of how to calculate the elasticities for complements and for substitutes. Okay, so on the left hand side we have substitutes and we're using the situation of butter and margarine and we figured out that they have a positive relationship between the price of butter when the price of butter increases then the quantity of margarine also increases. So if we were to put this onto our formula which looks like that, we say that for example if the price of product one which is butter Let's say, for example, we experience a 10% increase in the price of butter. This will lead to maybe an increase of 
in the consumption of margarine, therefore leaving us with a positive elasticity of two. And that basically signifies that the relationship is a substitute relationship. Moving over to our complement situation, we know that we've got printers and ink. And the relationship here is a negative relationship because when the price of printer increases, the quantity of ink decreases. So let's say, for example, here again, we assume product one, which is your printer. There's a 10% increase in the price of a printer, which now will lead to a decrease in the quantity of ink. So let's say, for example, there is a 20% decrease in the consumption of ink or quantity to model of ink. And this will lead to a negative elasticity of two, which signifies that this relationship is a complementary relationship. Okay, so now that we've gone through the content for what a substitute and complementary relationship is, we can now summarize it. And we can say that every time we deal with a substitute product, we always will get a positive elasticity, meaning that when the price of a product increases, like we had in our butter graph, the quantity consumed of margarine will also increase. And on the complementary side, we have a negative relationship between the two products, therefore giving us a negative elasticity, which shows that when the price of one product, like our printer, increased, we experience a decrease in the consumption of the other product. With regard to doing our calculations, whenever we're doing a substitute relationship, we'll always get a positive value, like we did in the example in the previous slide. And when we're doing a complementary relationship, we'll always get a negative relationship between the two products. This summarizes our cross-price elasticity of demand, where we assume two products in each situation, one of a substitute nature, where we can easily substitute one product for the other product, and then when we deal with a complementary product, these are products that can only be used with the use of another product, for example, the printer and the ink.